Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs and I want to thank you so much for joining me today as we are going to venture into another small issue with my new 2003 Pontiac Grand Am GT. Um, so, in the, uh, a previous vlog, we replaced our hazard switch um, because the turn signals were acting funny. They would not work all the time but once you mess with the hazard switch you can get them to work um, and the previous owners or somebody at one point in time I don't know if it was the last girl who had the car before me or if it was somebody before them but they had a brand new AC Delco hazard switch here in the car so I didn't have to buy this it basically came with the car um, and I didn't know it was in there until I did some digging around and I found it so we just installed that not that long ago, and while I have this dashboard, the center dashboard apart, we're going to take the stereo out because, yes, my Pontiac sound system curse continues on with this Grand Am. Um, and it's, it kind of sucks, <laughs> but it's okay. We've gotten through these stereo issues before, and I plan on getting through this one by keeping the original stereo that's in this car. So let me show you where we are at so far and what I'm hoping to do to remedy the problem. So as you can see here I have the center bezel torn off. In fact it's just sitting here on the seat. The cigarette lighter or 12 volt power outlet is still plugged in. It's not going anywhere so I'm not really worried about that. Um, it was you know, there's no point in me putting this back on if I'm just going to take it back off. Here's our new hazard switch. As you can see, it's fastened in. I already tested it. It's ready to go. Here's our wiring for both the hazard switch right here. And the smaller one is for your traction control override. So to get this cover off, because it's already off, the first thing you need to do... Oop, dropped it. Hold on. Here we go. You need to remove the ignition ring, which is, you know, sits in this hole here. So you pry this off with a screwdriver. It might be kind of difficult, but if you're like me, it'll fling off and hit the floor. It's fine, though. So you take your ignition ring off, and then you can just carefully pry around this plastic, and it just pulls right off. To get it to where it's laying like this, you need to have the ignition in the on position, and you have to take the shifter out of park to actually wedge this bottom piece out here from under there. Then once it's out like this, you can put this in park and take the key out and there you go. So this Grand Am has the top of the line monsoon sound system with CD and cassette. Um, but as you can see, this radio is, it's worn. So all the buttons, all the coating on the buttons are kind of off and you could just see the red behind them. Uh, and the backlight is burnt out as well. But another thing that I discovered when I was tinkering with this um, the other day to see if it worked or not was the CD player does not work. What a surprise. So I'm going to get this key. I'm going to show you guys what happens when you go to use the CD player. Now, when you turn the radio on, which is it on? No. Radio's on. Sounds good. Can't have the music on for copyright reasons. But you can see the radio's on. We have no clock. We have no display. The three little bulbs behind you are burnt out. So that's something I'm really hoping I could fix. Um, I've always wanted to actually learn how to do that. But let's put a CD in. That's it. <laughs> That's what it does. So once the CD's in there, if you can get it in there, and I honestly don't want to try. I guess it doesn't matter because I'm taking it apart anyway, but once the CD is in there, I don't know if, if uh, I'm going to have the same problem that I used to have with the similar stereo that was in my, my older Grand Prix. Um, where the CD kind of spins in there, like it doesn't have anything to grip onto, and uh, the CD constantly skips because the motor's turning 
but nothing's holding onto the CD and the CD just kind of free spins. I'm uh, gonna do the same method to this while it's out and that is using the electrical tape around the top half of the CD player because electrical tape around the top half where it comes down on the top of the CD um, gives it grip and traction to hold on to and ever since I did that with my Grand Prix stereo I've never had a problem with it since but this is a whole other issue because um, this it won't even take it and somehow it spins it really weird oh no it's not so I think we're gonna change the drive in this uh, similar to what I had to do in the Aztec and I do still have a donor stereo that we might be able to pull the drive from. Uh, the only thing I have to do is get the electrical tape situated on it. So we'll turn that off. So we're going to take the stereo out now. And um, I have to go to work soon. So we'll get the stereo out. I might be able to open the top. Um, and then maybe with the top off we'll see if the CD is going to actually go into the, the drive or not. So to get this out, I'm not sure what size these are. These might be tens. Somebody's been here before because we are missing a screw. So I don't think the stereo was always in here. I think somebody had something else in here and they took it out at some point um, before the car was purchased at a later time. But yeah, we're missing a screw here. Not a big deal though. We still have this one and we have this one and obviously two, it's not going to go anywhere. So let me see if my 10 millimeter will work and we'll go ahead and unfasten those and pull the stereo out. That was a little off. They're eights. Sorry, don't take my word for it. <laughs> not tens. They're eight millimeter. I wonder if they're even the original screws to be honest with you. And there's two. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, somebody has been back here for sure. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I had a feeling. I had a feeling that this was tinkered with at one time. So, yeah, they tied that. They tied all that into something else. Jeez. This is one reason why I don't like aftermarket stuff. Because you end up with stuff like this. So, it is what it is. <laughs> I uh, I almost feel like maybe getting a uh, original harness and just chopping it off of another Grand Am and maybe rewiring it because this I don't like the way that this looks. It's all it's all taped together and stuff. So that's kind of upsetting. Yeah, look at this. It's just they got it all taped and oi. Alright, let me try to unplug this, and uh, or no, I don't want to unplug it yet. I'm going to get the, the top off. Alright, so I hear some crackling now. So yeah, this, this wiring is not going to work. I'm going to have to try to work something else out with that. You can hear it crackling. So yeah, that, that, that's no good. Anyway, let's see what's going on real quick with this. We're going to pull the stereo out. See if we can see anything from the top. Nope. Probably something similar to what the Aztec was doing. The Aztec, the rollers would turn. And, um... Yeah, the rollers would turn but it wasn't pulling the CD in. Like I can probably try to force it in there, but I don't know what's gonna happen if you know I try to get it out. It's like almost in the center. <laughs> so yeah, 
we're, we're going to go ahead with our original plan. And that is going to be to uh, take the drive out and we'll swap it with another one. Yeah, that's not good. Got our stereo out. I have to get ready to go to work, so we will continue this at a later time. As for this, oh man, I wonder, it doesn't look like these were touched. Those look original on that harness there. Yeah, it's, they cut it into there. So I'm going to have to look at another Grand Am. And uh, hopefully I can fix all that. I'm actually kind of glad that I pulled this out. I'm not glad, but at the same time I'm glad because this could have been a potential issue with um, the stereo. So this is just... <laughs> oh, I hate it when people do that. Unfortunately, I'm stuck with it now. But that's all right. We'll, we'll get it figured out. So all the original wires I'm assuming are in here. So we'll cut an original harness and uh, maybe I'll buy a solder and we'll do it the right way. But in the meantime, I got to go. So that's where we're going to leave off for this segment of this vlog and I will catch you guys in a bit. All right, guys, it's been a few days. I actually filmed another vlog in the process of this one, but you guys off the way for that. So I'm in my office, I have uh, this stereo from the Grand Am in here. Um, the top is still off from the last time that we looked at it. The other day I did go to the junkyard and I did cut the wiring harness off of another uh, Grand Am. So I do have that plugged in. All I have to do now is cut the ends of these and splice them together with the wiring that's in the car. So we have that. The other connector didn't look like there was really anything taped to it so that's going to be that should be fine. Next to it I have my donor stereo. This is the original stereo that I pulled out of my 2008 Grand Prix. Uh, this is the one that came with the Grand Prix and the reason why I took it out is because of the uh, slipping of the disc uh, again that common issue and also all of the backlight burned out. The reason why I pulled this out though is because I'm going to try to take the CD drives. I'm going to take the drive from this, see if it'll work in here. It should because as you can see it's pretty much the exact same stereo. So the CD drive should be the exact same. I might have to open this one up though, the, the, the actual drive unit, and put the tape on the white thing here as you see. So when you put electrical tape around the edges of this, that's what kind of helps gain traction or helps the CD gain traction because that thing spins. It's, it's kind of pressed on the top part of the CD um, and I think over time they I don't know if they get weak or if the surface just doesn't grab anything it's just a hard piece of plastic so I'm really surprised there's nothing there that would give the CD more traction um, and also you know when I was at the junkyard all of the stereos that I found with this face had the same kind of buttons I either found no stereos or I found the stereo with the buttons that kind of look like this. So I was thinking of just maybe taking the buttons off of this one. The only difference is, you know, they're black, this, these are gray, but I don't have to change all of the buttons. I don't really care about this button, and I don't really care about the EQ button, but these ones are pretty bad. So I'm thinking if I take the face off of here, these may be separate buttons. I don't think they're all attached together um, I'll find out but if that's the case then I may just take the buttons that look nice from this one and swap them over to this one maybe just these that way these are all black the st lower half will stay gray this button here though does say tape CD and tape this one says CD and aux obviously it's gonna serve the same function because it's going into this machine but it's just not gonna say tape that big a deal? Not really. I could always leave that one in there, but then you have one gray button in this batch and that might just look funny, so I don't know. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open both stereos technically and uh, start getting some parts 
out of them, seeing what the button situation is, and maybe even seeing what it's going to take to fix these backlights. Alright, so here's where we're at so far. I just loosened up the CD drive from the Grand Am's stereo. Um, you have to pry the face off, which on this stereo, there's tabs like this. There's two of them on each side. You just pry them off the screwdriver. And then carefully bring this back. Be careful because there's two wiring connectors down there. Uh, and other than that, there are two screws. One goes there. You can kind of see the ring. One goes here. The other one goes here, I think is it. And you take this and this out of the side, this and this out of the back, and that's it. So then you lift it up. I already unplugged it. There's a piece of cardboard in there. So there's two connectors that go there, and this drive is out. So, I wonder, I wonder what happened to keep this from actually bringing CDs in. It sounded like the rollers worked, but the drive in the other stereo, which as you can see I, I ripped the entire face off. Um, you know, when I took it out of that Grand Prix, this was only three years old, and it was, you know, acting up with the slipping thing. Uh, I don't have the top off yet, so I don't remember if I put the tape on it or not. If I didn't put the tape on it, like I said, we're going to have to cut it open and uh, do the tape thing. But then we're going to take that drive and put it into here. So they should be the same drive, um, I'm pretty sure. So now I just have to crack the other one open and see what I find out. Alright, so I opened up the, the old Grand Prix stereo that I had. Here's our part number from the Grand Am stereo, the broken one. And if we look at the Grand Prix, it's the exact same part number. So this drive should be 100% compatible with our Grand Am stereo. And from the looks of it, I don't think there is any electrical tape placed up above. So I am probably going to have to carefully take the top off of this one. And I'm uh, going to have to do that whole spiel all over again. Alright, so I have the actual top peeled off of the uh, Grand Prix's old CD player so I can show you guys what issue I was facing and what I'm going to be doing to hopefully get this one to work. So as you can see, the inside of the drive, um, and I'm, I'm just saying this for the people who may not have ever watched my videos when I still had my old uh, 08 Grand Prix and the CD player issues that I had with it. But basically, if you look here, you know, I'm going to try to demonstrate it. Oop, not doing a very good job. There we go. So the CD will go in through the front of the CD player. And then it will, it's not going to really do it because we're not actually running power to this thing. But as you can see, the CD will then, the, the bottom half of the CD player will, uh, I think it's the bottom half on this one think so. Either way, so down there, the actual spool for, for spinning the CD, I think it comes up. It'll come up, and this little plastic piece here rides against the top half of the CD player. Now what happens is there is nothing on either one of these devices, on this plastic piece or the actual motor assembly down below, that give the CD traction. So over time, when you have the CD in here, and the CD is spinning round and around and around and this thing is spinning and the bottom is spinning over time somehow the CD multiple different CDs will lose traction and as the eye is trying to read the CD um, this is just kind of sp not really spinning the speed that it should the CD doesn't spin as fast as it should or a bump will make it skip because there's nothing keeping these CDs from you know from free spinning so it was my idea when I had the other stereo for the Grand Prix when it started acting up to take this off and it just kinda slides out 
So I'll take electrical tape and we'll just, like I said, fold them around the edges and the electrical tape, since it's kind of rubbery, will give it traction. I thought maybe trying to put it on the bottom half at one point, but it's too close to the eye, so I thought it would be best to just put it up on this side. And it's worked. It worked for me until I got rid of the car. So it, it was a solution, um, kind of a hassle to actually tear all this open, but it worked. If you want to keep the original stereo and that's your issue, then this is what you got to do. This is the best thing that I was able to do. Or I don't have any here, but I thought about maybe like Plasti Dip, because the Plasti Dip is kind of rubbery, but I don't have that. So I'm just going to stick with my original uh, electrical tape uh, solution and go from there. All right, here's what we did. So you can see the majority of the bottom side of this is covered in this. So I just take a small piece of tape, fold it over the edge, press it down real good, and then cut the corners. So that way nothing is going to catch on that, you know, while it spins. So that's it. That's all I do. I'm going to stick it back in, get this back together, and go from there. Alright guys, so it's another day. Um, so, I messed up. Uh, actually, I didn't really mess up. I had a little incident with my original radio from this Grand Am. So, um, yeah, it's now officially no good. Um, <laughs> when I was filming all that stuff, um, you know, changing out the drives and whatnot, I went to go put the uh, radio on the floor next to me, um, and the face was still loose. And somehow, when I was getting ready to put it on the floor, the actual radio fell out of my hands, and I tried to catch it, but I caught it by the face. So, needless to say, when I grabbed it by the face, I ended up ripping out a few of the wires that connect the face to the stereo unit. So that stereo is no good. <laughs> and But that's okay. Um, we're going to look for another radio, uh, another original monsoon uh, sound system or head unit for this car. Um, so I'm going to start looking on eBay and stuff. Maybe I could try to find a brand new one. Um, I was at the junkyard earlier today, thought maybe I can find one out of another Grand Am, but all of the ones in the Grand Am are gone, or they're just the base head units, like the bare minimum base level um, head units, and we don't want that. They probably wouldn't work anyway in here, so it is what it is. So our, our stereo isn't going back in today. However, what we're going to do now, you know, we're out here in the hot sun, the hot car. Uh, we're going to attempt to fix our uh, our wiring mess here. So, yeah. This is where I'm going to be a little nervous because we only really have one shot at this. Uh, so we have to be as you know good as possible. Um, this is what I cut off a few days ago at the junkyard. I already cut the ends off. So we just have to twist them into the new wire. Um, a friend of mine at work let me borrow a lot of his wiring stuff, so we're going to be doing this um, a proper way. We have, these are sweet, I like these, automatic wire strippers. So, those work pretty good. We're going to be using that. We have a crimp tool pair of crimping pliers and we're going to be using these on these so basically we're going to put two ends of the wire on each side obviously we're going to crimp these onto the wire and then from there we're going to heat shrink them and to do the heat shrink we're going to use this butane torch got the cap on it right now these you know we're not worried about these I wish I had a better way of keeping these out of my way that's obviously for our hazard switch and our traction control button that's where those go um, 
So there's two harness here for the stereo. I don't think this one's been tampered with. It looks torn up. Actually, what is that? There is a little... They got some wire hung up there. What is that? No, I don't think that's actual wire, is it? Maybe it is. I don't know what they did, man. Okay, but anyway, from what I can see, I won't know until I cut this stuff off, but it doesn't look like anything's really been messed with in this one. Obviously, the one that we are concerned about is this whole mess right here. Look at this. It's all taped together. Bare wire just taped together. This looks like something that I would have done a long time ago. <laughs> Which is why we're not repeating this. We're going to do this correctly. So all the wires are obviously the same color. This thing here, I'm concerned about. Um, this is definitely not a factory wire. I even looked... And, uh, you know, in the last Grand Am that I cut the other one off of, there is nothing coming through here. So this is something else. I'm really afraid to know what it is. I might... Let's see. It's... What? Do they have two wires going to this one? It's like, what is this going to? It's such a mess. I have no idea. It's probably going... Maybe as part of that aftermarket remote system. Is that it right there? Yeah, there's my wire right there. So, where do they have that routing to? Let's see. Oh, white wire here. And where's it going? It's going back. Is it to the aftermarket system? can't tell. It's such a mess back here, man. I gotta get it, find it, figure out a way to get rid of all this stuff. Where's it going? It's going back. Where do they have that going to? You know, I don't remember seeing anything like this when I went to look at the car. So, what did what did somebody do to this thing at one time? Let's get, let's get a prop rod. Can we see it? Does it? Oh, it probably goes into here. They probably routed something into this box but I don't oh you know what hold on a second hold on is it that I think it's this it's this they have it tied to the battery positive on the box the relay box yep that's it that's what it is. So that mm, hmm, we might be able to. Are we gonna be able to eliminate that? That may have been something that they had for the whatever aftermarket they had in here at one time. It is my guess. Okay, so now I know what that's for. It doesn't look too promising anyway. It's all... Yeah. Alright, well that's one mystery solved. Speaking of battery positive, actually, we are going to need to disconnect our battery. I'm not going to be cutting anything while the battery's still hooked up. So, we'll disconnect the battery. And I think that's going to require, I, for, I forget what size, 5 sixteenths. Now we can get to work on actually getting rid of this nest over here. Uh, yeah, we're not, 
Again, I don't think we're gonna do anything with that today. So why? I mean, I'm just I'm confused why they would have this. Uh, it's too hot for my hat. <laughs> why they would have this positive running? Unless they had uh, they were using it to maybe get the stereo on all the time without the key in the ignition. I don't know. Because we we should have a factory you know battery, obviously in this. One of these wires has to be, you know, in this older harness here. Boy, I really, really hope all these wires are still here. I mean, they all look like they're there. Oh, boy. All right. Let's, uh, let's get into this. It's all gooey. Gross. Well, the good news is, I mean, from the looks of it, I know it's kind of hard to see down there. From the looks of it, I still have a pretty decent amount of wire to work with. So, that's cool. What's this here? Pink and orange. I have a feeling those are probably, are those our ignition wires? Or battery wire? I think the orange, if I remember, I, didn't, I looked at a wiring diagram very briefly but I think the orange it's definitely a thicker wire than all these that's probably battery positive positive. and there's a pink wire there we have pink here that could be maybe ignition signal my guess but it does look like all of our actual wiring colors are here pretty much the same amount of wiring so yeah, this is just going to take some time to do the cutting, the splicing, the heating, um, and trying to untangle all this mess. I'm still a little, I'm still a little concerned about what this is here. What is that? And the sad thing is I can't test it because I ruined my radio. This old fiber tape's just coming off. All right, so I'm gonna get my cutters and we're just going to cut off all of this balled up mess here. Try to separate all these wires. Snip the coating off of them with this stripper. I should be able to get those in there. Yeah, that should be fine. And let the nightmare begin. All right, so all of that is snipped off, um, except for one. I have a purple here, and as you can see, there's a purple beside it. I didn't realize there were two purples. So the purple that is still connected to the mess down here is this one right here. It goes into almost the middle, while the other one that I cut goes at the bottom. So I kept that purposely hooked up so I knew exactly which purple that that was gonna be. All the other wires aren't really duplicated and the ones that are, like a couple of these greens, because as you can see, we have some twisted wires. The ones that are twisted are the speaker wires, all the speaker channel channels. So those are kind of obvious. Um, so they're all snipped off, except for this one. So we'll leave that hooked up just for the time being. But as you can see, we got most of our mess out of the way. This thing here is still hooked up. Um, I do want to see exactly what they attempted to do here. They took two wires. It looks like two wires. And tied it into this white wire here. I just want to see what pins they go in. I'm pretty sure... It's, it's going to be for the battery voltage, and maybe even the ignition. They might have taken ignition source for the stereo, too. Because the orange and pink ones coming out of the dashboard weren't tied into that for some reason. So my guess is... They got these going into the pins where 
the orange wire and the pink wire are on the original harness. But hopefully we can eliminate that wire. I'm assuming we will because we definitely have our ignition wires here. Assuming they work, I'm pretty sure they would work. Um, I could always try, try to test them real quick. All right, yeah, so I pulled up the wiring diagram again. This whole big box here along this is the radio itself. And as you can see, battery positive is coming from that orange wire. And then the purple wire is for the DLC, so that's the data wire. Um, the brown wire is for the parking lamp supply voltage, basically, you know, the lights inside the radio. Instrument panel lamp supply voltage is the gray wire. And the pink and light green wires looks like they're for the steering wheel controls, which obviously we don't have. So why the pink wire was tied to the orange wire, I'm not really sure. It looks like radio on signal from the pink wire, so I don't know. I'm not really sure. We're going to splice it into our pack as it should be. Um, and then from there, the dark green wire whoop, coming off the harness um, is the amplifier control. And then we have two ground wires. So we have a black and white and we have a black. So pretty simple. So I think what I will do is uh, I'll hook the battery back up real quick. Make sure none of these other wires are touching. Um, we'll clip the orange wire first and we'll clip, uh, we'll clip both of the black wires. There's really nothing there that's going to spike. It probably won't matter which, which one we ground to, just as long as we have a ground. But we'll see if we are getting power from the battery voltage wire before we do any of this. All right, so I got the battery hooked up. Got our wire clip on the orange wire. I have to find my clip. Turn our voltmeter to DC. Hope it doesn't spark, it might spark. Hey, there we go. So that wire does work. We have 11.73 volts coming in through that. This car hasn't been started in a while and I've been running the battery from the, uh, obviously the lights, I'm trying to diagnose the sunroof thing. Oh, you'll see that in probably the next vlog. I forgot. Anyway, so yeah, we do have power coming through there. That orange wire is the hot at all times coming directly from the um, relay or the fuse block under the hood, I think. So it appears as though that that wire is working. I'm happy. So now we could turn it off, we can re disconnect <laughs> disconnect our battery again and move forward. All right, so we got one wire done. Mm -hmm. Judging from the looks of this, this harness is gonna be really long. <laughs> but I just wanted to make sure that I had enough room, you know, to work with. I could probably tuck some of that stuff up a little higher uh, when we, you know, uh, get ready to put all this stuff back in. But we'll make it work. But that's pretty much what they're all gonna look like when we're done with this. So, um, so basically I'm not going to film this entire process or really isn't a whole lot to it. I just, I'm happy that I'm actually able to do this the correct way, but obviously, you know, we take one of these ends here, one of these ends that are cut, we take one of these little crimp connectors, you, you twist the wire first to make sure it goes in, but basically you get the idea. You slide it in here. Then you take the other end, you put it on the other end of that. Then you take your crimpers and you squeeze and that flattens out these so it traps both wires together. Uh, then you have your heat shrink tubing, which is what that is. You put it, slide it over the top, make sure you have it on the wire first before you do your crimp. Slide it over the top, take the butane torch, it'll melt. It'll shrink. You see the goo coming out of it. It's like an adhesive on the inside. And that's it. That wire is now together. Uh, and it should not break. We shouldn't have any problems with that. Alright, so it's been almost an hour later. And uh, so far, here's where we're at. I think all I have left to do are the actual speaker wires, which are the ones all twisted back there. 
So I have to do those and the purple wire that's still connected to this. This is what I was about to do right now is chop this off. We already got the other purple uh, right here. I just did it. So it's time to do the purple that was still connected. The speaker wires. And that's it. This portion is done. Alright guys, so it's been a little time later. I've got three wires left. I've got these two here and this pink one. I started doing the gray one and the uh, butane. <laughs> butane torch died. So I think I have to go uh, buy a can of butane. And that way we can finish it up. But it's getting there. And there may be a lot of wire, but it looks a lot nicer than that. All right, so after a, a trip to the hardware store, all of our wires are complete. I just finished doing these two. So the glue coming out of the heat shrink is probably still a little fresh. At least that, uh, what, brown one or gray one. So this is what we're left with. Uh, now all we have to do, I'm just double checking everything, make sure we're okay. So now all that we have to do is grab some electrical tape and we'll try to tie all this up into the electrical tape that way it's not all sitting like this I am gonna go under the hood and I'm going to get rid of this before I hook the battery back up um, that's really the only thing that was left connected to the mess here and as we discussed earlier I don't think we need it it doesn't seem necessary. Um, once we have that unhooked and the battery connected, I'm going to hook my voltmeter back up. And we're going to retest the orange wire and uh, this, this one here, the black and white. Um, see if we still have power. And we should. And if we have power there, then we should be good everywhere else because uh, I did the same exact thing to all of these wires. Nothing is really all that different. Alright, so we got that sucker off. <laughs> I really don't think we're going to need that. That doesn't seem necessary. So, good. So for the most part, that center, that center console or that center stack should be back to uh, factory original, you know, spec without any odd things except for that one harness, but I don't know what the deal is with that. So, I might just leave that one alone for the time being. But the stereo stuff, the stereo stuff is all good now. So power is connected back to the box, not literally, but because I, you know, I completely disconnected the battery. But that's ready to go. Okay. So like I said, I'm gonna hook my um, multimeter back up. And then once this is completely connected, we should have our full-time power back to the orange wire. All right, so we have the um, paper clips <laughs> probed into where those are supposed to be on this wiring harness here. And uh, the orange one is at the top, top corner. The white and the black is at the bottom right corner. So I've got the multimeter on. It's picking up like millivolts right now, but there's nothing going through it. Can you guys see that? Nope.
All right, and I see that our battery voltage is back in this uh, wire, so I'm going to say that we did a good job with our um, crimping and heat shrinking. So all that's left to do is to get our, our electrical tape and, you know, uh, wrap it up and I guess just wait for me to get the new radio, I guess. All right, and here we go. So, not too shabby. I didn't want to wrap them all up. Figured I'd leave some out. And there's only, you know, I can't really go all the way up there because the antenna hooks into it. And... So that's pretty much it. It looks a lot better compared to this nonsense. Whatever this is. <laughs> um, so, that's pretty much it. That's our traction button. This one here. See, I just want to know what this this is. Well, I honestly do not know what this is. I started taking the tape off and all of this is wrapped in blue. So I don't know. Was this for the satellite radio maybe? This has that um thing on the roof. For like uh, XM radio maybe this is for the satellite and maybe this I don't know it doesn't look like anything's really been cut from here because there's only three wires going to it there's no leftover pins but I see this wrapped in blue and stuff and I wonder if maybe it has something to do with with that because this is this is our regular antenna here if I'm not mistaken that's the antenna so I don't know I'll look into that obviously nothing's going back in but it's probably it might be just for the satellite or something so we're good I'm done this has been a long enough vlog we got that taken care of all we really need now is the stereo and that is pretty much it and it's probably best to buy the stereo because the one that was in here you know there was a chance that I could have got it to work but the display is burnt out, the buttons are worn out, the CD drive was already broken. We might as well just get a new one. It's, you know, realistically, it's probably the best way to go. So, I'm looking, and we'll eventually get one. In the meantime, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Also, check out teespring.com slash stores slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. That's it. So I will see you guys next time. I want to thank you so much again for watching, and take care.